In Donbass, Russian invaders are seizing villages of 10 houses where no one has lived for 15 years. This was stated by retired Major Alexei Getman, a veteran of the Russian-Ukrainian war, on air of Radio NV. Getman spoke about the situation in the Donetsk region and the most threatening areas of military action. In particular, the goal of the Russian invaders is to capture Pokrovsk. The enemy has come very close to the city. According to various estimates, the occupiers are 7 to 10 kilometers from Pokrovsk. Then it was stopped and there was no further direct advancement towards the city of Pokrovsk. There were battles, variable successes, positions changed. By and large, there was no advancement. Getman said. According to him, the enemy tried to encircle Pokrovsk from the flanks. From the north, this is the Toretskoy direction, and from the south, Kurakor. He was especially active in the Kurakor direction. Firstly, to straighten the front line, because the Pokrovsk salient for the Russians turned out to be such that one could expect Ukrainian attacks from the flank, and then cut off the group, which then came almost right up to the city of Pokrovsk, noted Getman. At the same time, he commented on the information published by BUILD about the capture of many settlements in the Selidovo region by Russians. Personally, I and many of my acquaintances during the full-scale war were in those places in Luhansk and Donetsk regions, and there were such small settlements that did not even have a sign. There are three, four or ten houses there. Perhaps no one has lived in them and has not lived in these settlements for a long time, but legally they exist. And when we talk about military actions and say that the enemy managed to capture or we liberated settlements, then it seems that this is a large number of cities and some serious actions, noted Getman. At the same time, according to him, it happens that these settlements consist of five houses in which no one has lived for 15 years. Every day in the news that three to four settlements have been captured. You know, the front section there is several dozen and the area there is not that big and there are settlements there. It seems dozens or hundreds. Once again, not the overwhelming majority, but a large number of these settlements exist, not in fact, but legally. They are registered on the map. There has been no one there for a long time, said Getman. A man who was convicted in Russia over social media posts which criticized the country's fight in Ukraine was released from prison on Tuesday. Alexei Moskalev, 55, a single father, was met by his daughter Maria outside the jail in Tula region. After his release, Moskalev told OVD Info about his experience spending two months in prison. He likened the conditions inside his cell to a torture chamber that was two meters by one meter in size. At first, I was sitting alone, then they put a second person in, he said. Moskalev also claimed that the jail's floors were rotten, rats were everywhere, coming from the sewers and everywhere. In 2022, his daughter refused to participate in a patriotic class at school and made a drawing which said, no to war, and glory to Ukraine. He was then investigated by police and indicted over a series of social media posts about Russia's activities in Ukraine. Moskalev was sentenced to two years in prison, but fled house arrest hours before the jail term was handed down. He was arrested in neighboring Belarus and extradited to Russia. Moskalev's daughter was dispatched to an orphanage following his arrest. Это камера пыток была просто. Что находилось в камере? Во-первых, камера была э, 2 на 1 размер. Понимаете, что такое 2 на 1? Э, сначала один сидел, и потом второго э, посадили человека. И вот мы вдвоем 2 на 1. Вот в этой размере камеры сидели. Э, полы гнилые, крысы повсюду, из канализации везде лежат, крысы огромные. Из одежды было только вот, вот этот вот этот все, и маечка, и на голое тело. На голое тело, да. Холод, это просто собачий. Это просто, знаете, не передать словами. 
16 часов на, сто... на ногах приходилось стоять, потому что в кровати утром пристегивались к стене, чтобы не могли ложиться. И 16 часов до отбоя мы стояли практически на ногах. Сидеть невозможно было, лавочка маленькая, металлическая. Настолько она была проколена ледяная, что на ней просто сидеть невозможно было. The European Union on Monday imposed sanctions on Iran's deputy defense minister, senior members of its paramilitary revolutionary guard and three airlines over allegations that they supplied drones, missiles and other equipment to Russia for use in its war against Ukraine. Commission President Ursula von der Leyen confirmed the new measures during an appearance in Berlin, alongside German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. The daily killing and the death of innocent people that we see would not be possible without the supplies and the supply lines by Iran. And therefore, these sanctions against Iran are sending a very clear message. Contributions to terror and Russia's illegal war of aggression have serious consequences, von der Leyen said. Iranian Deputy Defense Minister Syed Hamza Galandari is one of seven senior officials now banned from traveling in Europe and whose assets in the bloc were frozen. The EU said he is involved in the development of Iran's and missile program, given his high-level defense role. Iran Air, Mahan Air and Saha Airlines had their assets frozen. The EU said their planes were used repeatedly to transfer Iranian-made unmanned aerial vehicles and related technologies to Russia, which have been used in Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. EU foreign ministers endorsed the sanctions at a meeting in Luxembourg. In March, the bloc had warned that, were Iran to transfer ballistic missiles and related technology to Russia for use against Ukraine, the EU would be prepared to respond swiftly including with new and significant restrictive measures. EU member countries, with the exception of Hungary, have been supplying weapons and ammunition as well as economic and other support to Ukraine worth some 118 billion euros since Russia launched its full-scale invasion in February 2022.